No. You stay here. I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? Hi everyone and welcome to Priority Holder. And today I'll be playing Red Black Tribelcher Combo in the timeless format. Now the name of the game is Goblin Tribelcher. It's a four mana artifact that you can pay three, tap, and basically reveal cards until you hit a land and it deals that much damage to any target. However, if you have the constraints of no lands in your deck, it just deals damage equal to your deck size. So it's basically an instant kill. So we need to be able to do a couple things. We need to find the Tribelcher and also get the requisite seven total mana to play it and activate it. So that's what the whole deck is built around. So you'll notice that we have no actual lands. We have fake lands using like MDFCs of varying amounts of utility, like Shatter Skull Smashing and Spike Field Hazard can deal with creatures and Valakut Awakening can help filter cards. Um, so that's the whole idea is we have MDFCs to function as our mana sources and have zero true lands in the deck. Now the most easiest way to win with Goblin Charbelcher is using Iron Crag Feet, which is a ritual that produces seven mana, but only allows one more spell cast. This works perfectly with Charbelcher because we could spend four to cast it, three to activate it, game over. So that's like a really clean way to get the kill. We can also possibly string together some dark rituals to help get it out there faster, maybe strike it rich to accelerate a little bit, but that's the idea. Now, we only have four copies of Goblin Charbelcher, so we're running, of course, one copy of Demonic Tutor, and we're running four copies of Wishclaw Talisman to get whatever sort of combo piece that we're missing at that moment. There is a bit of a risk with this, um, but you have to use it wisely. Also, we're running four copies of Reckless Handling. It's basically a gamble exclusively for artifact cards, so it just helps us possibly get uh, Goblin Tribelcher to hand. Anyway, let's jump, some, jump into some games. So it's very important in this deck to really think about your opening hands because you know it just gets confusing with the MDFCs, which ones are tapped, untap, which colors. You just gotta make sure you have it all sorted out. All right, turn one, Baldarian Epicure from the opponent, followed up by Mishra's Bobble. And thinking ahead, so we could just play Strike It Rich and play a tapped land, or we could bolt one in and play a Cold Steel Heart, or even a Reckless Handling. So, decide to just to expand the mana to give us more options in subsequent turns. But there's an argument for a couple different plays there. So, when it cracks a fetch for a mountain, Experimental Synthesizer. I love that card. It's, and especially with the artifact land being revealed, it seems like there's some sort of artifact shenanigans deck, hence the Epicure and the, the Synthesizer. So we probably have like a shrapnel blast in there and stuff like that. Now we 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 were super fortunate. We drew the goblin char belcher, so we could just slam shatter skull smashing and play belcher and threaten to win next turn. Um, that is that runs the risk of like exposing char belcher to artifact destruction, which I don't know if they have that much of in mono red. What I end up doing is playing wishclaw talisman to grab Iron Crag Feet. That way we can just do it all in one go next turn. Now it is it is risky giving them Wish Cloud Talisman. Also we have to make sure we play the tapped MDFC in the case of uh, you know, needing another land for next turn. So opponent activates Wish Claw and they grab Cleansing Wildfire and destroy one of our lands. So opponent, the heads up play from the opponent. They, they know shenanigans are afoot and so yeah, we have no basics so they they, they sniffed out what was going on and, and made a really awesome play. Unfortunately for them, uh, we still have the requisite mana to fire off Iron Crag Feet, which gives us perfectly seven to cast our one spell, then use the rest to activate for the win. The opponent sees the writing on the wall, and that is it. And yeah, this, this deck's awesome. So as we move into the next game, please Cyclopean snare the like button, comment and subscribe. It supports the channel and helps you know what the people want. Thank you. And we are playing against a Wizards of the Coast employee, hence the the dark orange name. So that's pretty fun. Let's see if we could show them a thing or two. All right, Snow-Covered Forest, Arboreal Gra Grazer, and Field of the Dead. Okay, so probably one of those like turbo field decks that's hoping to get it online as soon as possible. I love Field of the Dead. It's one of my favorite cards. I have as many copies I could get a hand, my hands on for Commander decks. 
Um, once again, have tons of options with our deck. I'm leading with Faithless Looting, and boy am I glad I did because we, we happened to snag an Iron Crag feat to go together with our Goblin Charbelcher. Now it's the difficult decision of what do we discard. So it requires playing out the next few turns in our head. So like you could see I'm agonizing over this. There, there are maybe a couple things to pitch, like maybe Dark Ritual. Um, what I'm really trying to do is get to four mana as fast as possible with at least three red sources. So Cold Steel Heart seems like an important keep along with our, our appropriate MDFC lands. So this gives us our second red source. We can play Cold Steel on black or red and then Shatter Skull. So that, that's that's why that Faithless Looting took so long and most of them do take that long because you have to play through what exactly you need to keep. All right, so opponent has another Arboreal Grazer, not to mention a Sylvan Scrying getting Colony Garden. Um, wonder if that's some sort of fodder for natural order, maybe like a Crater Hoof or something. So we're just gonna slam Cold Steel Heart and play a tap land. Play a Mishra's Bobble for good measure. And go ahead and decide to crack it here. It's like better to, you know, crack it on their upkeep or we, we, we're not anticipating discard from them having seen no black sources thus far. All right, Fierce Empath. Presumably searching up like a Titan. Yeah, and there's prime time. So yeah, they're trying to turbo field out. They already got Castle Garenbrig, and they pass, but that is it for them because we have Iron Crag feet into Goblin Char Belcher. This, this is the kind of deck that we thrive against. Low interaction and a deck that's not as quick as we can be. So they're not messing with our plan and we can just simply outrace them. The risky thing though is if we play like an exposed char belcher and they draw like a Bishseju that they could channel like especially if we give them a wish claw talisman that that is the tricky part with these uh turbo field decks i'm assuming they play at least one Bishseju. all right opponent cracks into a snow covered forest and plays kami of bamboo groves which is basically like arboreal grazer from from the alchemy set so presumably another like titan turbo field deck that we're battling against which um, is a good matchup, but this one seems to have black, so they might have some hand disruption to make our make our lives miserable. All right, so they pass. And I didn't spend enough time thinking about this. I just sort of rip a Faithless Looting right here because they could just slam a Bowmasters and then we're really on a clock. So it is, you do have to pay attention to two mana, when, especially if one of it's black. So I was a little hasty here, but yeah, now comes the difficult Faithless Looting discard decision. So we did happen to get the Iron Crag Feet plus Char Belcher assembly. It's just about keeping enough lands to make things happen. Now you have to be cautious when playing Spike Field Hazards because that's a good way to kill Bowmasters and stuff which can prey on our like Faithless Lootings. So we have to just be conscious of that. All right, so opponent passes again. I'm gonna go ahead and play a Mishra's Bobble. It it looks, I mean, they haven't hit us with any hand disruption yet, so it looks like we're all systems go for a, to attempt to try and win next turn. So we go ahead and pass. And now they have the Orcish Bowmasters. Fortunately, they didn't have it earlier. So they're gonna ding us. And they're gonna pass. But we're still not worried. Like, hand disruption is the only thing we care about right now, unless they outright kill us, so. Castle Garenbrig gets them a Primeval Titan, which is strong. Um, and let's see what they go ahead and fetch up. All right, so they fetch up Double Field of the Dead, which doesn't even trigger yet, but we don't really care about that. And literally, they know this is their last turn. And they must be feeling decent about their start. I mean, that's like a turn four Titan. Now, I go ahead and crack the Mistress Bobble here out of habit, but honestly, we, we didn't need to and probably shouldn't in a lot of these cases with an active Bowmasters or a Shieldred. But yeah, we get this slam Iron Crag feet into Char Belcher and just lock up another win right here. Like I said, th this deck feasts on like non interactive decks that are just slower than it. So, um, pretty awesome opening hand. Don't have a black source except for Cold Steel. All right, they shock an overgrown tomb into Thought Seize. So now we get to face hand disruption and they go ahead and snag Char Belcher. So, we're going to have to work a little bit harder. We're going to definitely play the, our weakest MDFC as our, our tap land. Second land. 
opponent hesitates a little bit and end up passing the turn. Now I, now I'm like, this this like a soul read for like a an orcish bowmasters right here. So ideally, you'd, I'd rip like a faithless looting right there, but that would just up the clock on us by a lot. And yeah, they did have the bowmaster, so opted to bolt in the land to get the cold steel heart. Just because it seemed like a Bow Masters was a strong possibility there. And they did have it, so. It is it is risky running so much card draw when there's like so many Bow Masters and Shieldreds running around. Now there's a few things we can do. We can just continue building out our mana. But it really is annoying having all of our like card filtering basically shut down by Bow Masters. Like we can just run it in the face of it. So I end up using the very resource inefficient play of Dark Ritual into Shatter Skull Smashing to take down their creatures. I wanted to take them both out. Maybe I could have just shot down the Bowmasters and kept the Dark Ritual in case we needed it. But we really, really want to just take as many threats off the board as possible. And distributing the damage this way in case they have a second Bowmasters to grow their Orc army. And no place from the opponent. So they are they are a little mana screwed over there. Our opponent slams Tarmer Boy. Uh, very bad for us because that is that is a really quick quick clock right there. So now but now Faithless Looting is safe again. So we're gonna fire it off. Now unfortunately Faithless Looting is card disadvantage. So we're going down a card each time. So the discard decisions are just gonna get more and more agonizing. Now we do have extra copies of Faithless Looting. So it's not, you know, if we could survive a few more turns, we can keep running them. All right, another Faithless Looting. And we finally drew the Reckless Handling to get us a Goblin Tri-Boucher. Problem is, is that we have to discard most of our hand. And by the time we're done discarding, it's just going to be Reckless Handling and one other card. So the question is, do you fire it off with a 50% chance of failure? And I don't think this is the, the kind of deck for the faint of heart. You just got to go for it. So even though there's a high chance of failure, go ahead and gamble it and we fail. So, but I felt like Tarmogoyf's putting us under such a quick clock that we had to do something there. So that's pretty unfortunate. Opponent does a demonic tutor, possibly for the fetch land. It's hard to say. You know, we know they've been manuscripts. The shock on their land and they do it pre-combat wisely because it grows the Tarmogoyf. Wishclaw Talisman. So I think about this for a second, and we're unfortunately one mana away from going Wishclaw Talisman, you know, so Dark Ritual, Rich Wishclaw Talisman into um, Goblin Charbelcher. We're just one mana short. And, I, you know, we're already at 9, like, we, we have to make something happen now. So after thinking about it for a while, you see me toggle on full control. What I decided to do, is because the opponent has no, um, no basics, is to grab a Hagra Mauling to kill the Timer Goyf and just hopefully buy more time. So I'm really trying to have the Auto Tapper not screw me, but as you see right now, the Auto Tapper screws me over right here. And I look, for some reason, I don't know why, but it chose to use up the black mana. So I, I think I needed to, to keep it in full control and specifically choose the color of mana. Because I needed the two black in order to Hagra Mauling down the Tarmogoyf. So, so now we have to pivot because it used up the wrong mana. And decide just to grab Char Belcher and use the re re excess mana to strike it rich. And maybe, you know, if we draw a Dark Ritual next turn, that does it. If we draw an Iron Crag Feet... Presuming we don't die right here, so that's a lot of ifs, but unfortunately opponent has Liliana and they're going to be able to simply plus it, snipe it from our hand, and lock up the win right there. So, I don't think, you know, there's nothing we can draw that can get us there and we had to pack it in. So, a close one, but you could see how hand disruption makes our life more difficult. It's not impossible to win, but it makes it way more difficult. This is a pretty nice looking hand. Gonna go ahead and lead with the Akum Warrior tap land. And we have the we have the char belcher in hand, so. Alright, once upon a time from the opponent. Field of the dead. So. Alright, and another Arboreal Grazer start. 
let's see if they put field in. All right, so they put a different land. And I mean, this this is what we like to see, like these sort of slower decks that can't compete with us quite as fast. So we're gonna put a Hagrid Mauling into play tap after playing our Strike It Rich, and we can already slam a turn three Belcher, just make them have the Besage you. So we're gonna go ahead and see if that works. So we're gonna bolt the land in and just slam a Char Belcher. I don't think they main deck a lot of ways to deal with it and we can just activate it next turn and see if that's good enough. So, and yeah, that's good enough for the win. Well, that went better than expected. Turns out like just counting to seven mana um, is pretty good, especially if you're facing other sort of non-interactive decks. Um, you did see we struggled against the Thoughtseize decks. I don't think it's like an unwinnable matchup, but it makes it way more difficult. But it depends, I guess this deck really the utility will depend on the metagame. Like the more field decks that are out there that are just not interacting with us, the stronger this is. Um, the more Thoughtseize decks that are out there, the more Bowmasters punishing our Faithless Lootings, this gets a little bit weaker. But I think it is a fun and viable strategy, and there's definitely room for tinkering. Like I don't think this list is solved by any means. You could see some of the cards I was also thinking about. It possibly would be interesting to dip into blue for some other sort of artifact searching cards available there. But I really like the strength and sort of speed that Red Black offers. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments, um, what's your favorite combo card? Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day.